Hello everyone, and welcome to the second tutorial that we're talking about our command me utility. Previously, we talked about how our GUI application could then install a command line tool into user local bin, and we talked a little bit about how we could get admin privileges uh, doing that. Um, but in this video, we're going to be talking about how we can actually get our command me tool to do a little more than hello world. What we're going to do is actually be able to send a message from our command line into our GUI application on the right here, and then the application itself can actually respond to that if it so chooses. So let's talk about how this is possible. Well, there's probably more than one way to really accomplish this on Mac OS, but uh, one way that I'm going to be showing you today is using CF message port. Basically, what you can do with a CF message port is you can add it to the run loop, and your main application can then basically just have this in the run loop so that every time the run loop is kicking off, which is basically all the time <laughs> in your main application, right? Anytime you're receiving keyboard events or things like that, the run loop is always interpreting the incoming events and then potentially dispatching something from that. But uh, in our case, we want to have this CF message port source that's going to be listening for different events coming in, such as events from our command line tool. And basically, if it receives an event to our particular port, it will give you a callback for that and say, hey, how do you want to handle this? And it gives you sort of the ability to respond to that message. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start out by creating our message port and we'll work a little bit back from there. So to do this, we say CF message port create local. And the allocator is just going to be nil for the default. The CF string in this case is the port name. And so I'm just going to go ahead and create one in my app delegate. Probably, you know, in a real application, it might be better to separate these things out. But, uh, you know, I don't have too much code to really talk about here. So I'm just going to put it all here. Um, I'm going to have a bundle identifier. And we're going to uh, basically bridge this to a CF string. So we're bridging a standard string to a CF string so that we can use it in this call here. So this will be AppDelegate.port. The callback in this instance is what we are receiving, or uh, basically the, the function in which is going to receive the information in the callback. So when a message is received, this callback is what is actually going to be receiving that information. And to do this, Swift has a decent way of doing this where we can actually just say, uh, we'll create a, a lazy var for the callback. We're going to make it the same type, so CF message port callback. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here and just get double click on here so I can get the different parameters that I will expect. And then I'm going to delete this again. All right, so oops, still need. All right, so the different parameters for the callback we have message port. We have the uh, message identifier, so which I'm just going to call message ID. We have the CF data, which we're going to get back. And then we have this info parameter, which we're going to get back as well. And so let's close this guy off. And we're going to just return nil for now. We'll come back to what we actually want to return in this callback. But that will satisfy sort of the, the type. All right, let's go ahead and put in callback. For that proper or uh, parameter, the context is something that we still have to create. So let's go ahead and say var context, and this is a CF message port context, and this is the initializer for that. And if we kind of want to dive into it, there's a little more details on what each property does. If we open up our little helper here, and some of them are probably a little bit obsolete. For example, if you look at version, it like it just says version number of the struct must be zero. So basically, it sounds like this will never change. And it's just always going to be zero that you have to pass into this thing. So there's certain things that, you know, it seems like they were potentially going to extend this API, but then never really did. So anyway, that's what we have for uh, version here is always going to be zero. Info is just an object that you can essentially pass into reference. And uh, this is what we're going to actually pass in as our app delegate. Uh, potentially not really needed when we have, you know, the ability to put a callback on this like so. But you could really have the CF message 
callback be just its own function if you wanted, right? It could just be a standalone function somewhere. It doesn't actually have to be a property on app delegate as long as it conforms to CF message port callback, uh, or rather it is that type, then it could just be a free floating function. And so the info pr parameter in CF message port context is an object that you wanna essentially inject into that function. And this is really how it would have worked in the C world because we didn't actually have the ability to do this. So anyway, version is gonna be zero here. Let's go ahead and make a info uh, uh, type here, so we'll say info, and what we're going to pass in is just our app delegate itself. Now, this is expecting an unsafe mutable raw pointer. How do we get that? Well, there's probably a few ways, but the easiest way I think is just to say unmanaged dot pass unretained self, and then there's a handy little method on unmanaged to uh, basically convert it to an unsafe mutable raw pointer, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say info. So what does this thing do? Well, it basically unmanaged allows us to say, hey, I don't wanna manage the memory or I don't want the system rather to manage the memory of retaining or releasing these types. And so that's what unmanaged itself is going to do. And then too opaque is actually going to convert it into that pointer. So anyway, we'll put in that. We don't need anything for retain, don't need anything for release, and we don't need anything for description. Let's go ahead and put in this context. So we need to say ampersand context because it wants a, a unsafe mutable pointer to that thing. So we can always do that with just uh, ampersand context, making sure that this is a var over here. And the last thing is just going to be nil. All right, so this is basically everything we need to actually instantiate the message port. It is optional, so we're gonna put this in if let uh, container here. The next thing that we want to do is create a source. So we're going to call this source. And this is a CF message port create run loop source, like so. And this is the thing that we can actually add into the run loop so that it can basically listen in for messages. The allocator is going to be nil. We have our message port. And our last thing here can be zero. All right, so now we've created the message port in the source. Now all we need to do is actually run it, or add it rather, to the run loop. So we can add a source. And if you wanna learn more about CF run loop, because I'm kind of leaving some details out here, but there's actually a lot of great documentation. If you just look up the documentation for CF run loop itself, it'll kind of give you a better description probably of what I'm giving you. But like I said, you can essentially add the source into the run loop and the run loop will be always running essentially in your application. And when a message is received, it will process that message and it will trigger the callback. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add this to the main run loop. So get main, the source is what we just created and the mode is default mode. And that's it. So we've officially added our message port for listening. So that's great. Now. How do we, what do we want to do with this callback, which is you know maybe the more important part here. So when we receive a message, what we want to basically do is we want to actually change our app state so that we can then update our appearance, basically the string on our application. So if you recall, app state has this little text property and we're using that in our GUI application to show the current text. And what would be nice is that if we could update this text from the command line tool itself, then we could do something with that. So let's go ahead and try to implement that. So the first thing I'm gonna just do a bunch of guard statements here. So I'm gonna unwrap a few things. So um, this pointer type, basically we have info, which is just this unsafe mutable raw pointer and it's optional. So I wanna get basically a solid pointer out of this. Uh, so now we have an unwrapped pointer. We also want to uh, get the data that is received, and this is coming from our CF data. So if I look at the type of this, it's also an optional. I want to make sure that I actually have something coming from this. So we're going to say CF data as, and I'm going to try to cast it back to a standard um, data type or a Swift data type so that we can use it a little more natively rather than the CF data type. 
And then lastly, we want to get the string that we're going to be sending from our command line tool. So our command line tool is going to pass us some data and in that data, it's going to be a string. So we're going to try to interpret this and to do that, we are going to use the data encoding initializer, passing our data received and we will do a UTF-8 encoding. So assuming all of this passes, that's great. Uh, and if it doesn't, we will just return nil. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's try and do a few more things. We're gonna get the app delegate out of our pointer. And so this is coming from, again, the this info parameter, right, is coming from the info that we originally passed into the message port so that we have a reference to this thing. And again, the reason that we want to potentially do this is that this callback could be totally a free floating function. And to make this just very reliable in that, you know, we could move this callback to a totally different class. It doesn't really matter. The nice thing is that we're always going to be passing in the info in which we're going to be referencing this app state. So anyway, that's what we're doing in this particular scenario. So what we're trying to do is unwrap that unmanaged type back into our app delegate. We're going to try to take it from opaque. So that just is the reverse of too opaque. So it's taking it from a pointer, trying to get it back into an actual object type. We want to use the pointer and then we want to take the unretained value from that, right? And that's because we passed an unretained value, so we should also take an unretained value. We don't want to try retaining and releasing this when we receive a callback. All right, now that we have our app delegate, we're good to actually try and change the app state. So we can change the text, and this is going to be taking our string that we decoded up here. And basically, we're going to do something where we say if it's empty, we're just going to say that we had nothing. And if there is something, then we're going to just take the string and assign that. The last thing is that we're going to actually send some data back to the, the command line tool that sent us this. And so I'm just going to call this data to send. And we're going to construct data here. I'll use a little emoji. And we'll say, you made it. And lastly, we encode that into UTF-8. All right, so that should give us our data to send back. And this expects an unmanaged, or rather, it expects a CF data as return. So we're going to do that little unmanaged dance again by passing the retained value of data to send. And it's going to be bridged to CF data. All right, so anyway, that's basically just to kind of recap why I'm doing that. The return type on the CF message port callback is an unmanaged CF data. So that's going to get us back into this, this uh, type here, right? So now we have an unmanaged CF data. We pass a retained value back because we need it to be basically a plus one type. So the, um, the person receiving that type will have, um, you know, the, the full value. If we didn't pass a retained value, then the, the data should basically be destroyed after uh, this callback. So we should pass a retained value back in this case. All right, so now we've done everything from our GUI app side to handle this message. The last thing is to actually send the message from our command line tool. So on this side, we want to create a CF message port remote. This is going to basically be the reverse of the local version that we have in our main GUI application. So the uh, allocator for this is just nil. Our uh, name is going to match the port name that we have in our app delegate, which is the bundle identifier for our command me application. So let's plop that in there and it should be a CF string. Then we're going to do a little guard let on this message port. And basically, if we don't have an active port that can uh, be receiving messages on this name, this will actually fail to create itself. And so we're going to print out a little message saying no local message port with the given bundle ID. And then if we have this happen, we'll give it an exit status of one. All right. Now with that, the next part is to actually create the send request. So to do that, we say CF message port send request. We pass that message port 
that we just created. The message ID we're just going to use as zero, which corresponds to this message ID that's going to be passed in in the callback. But you know, you can kind of do whatever you want with the message ID. It's not really necessary to be anything in particular. Data that we send is whatever data blob we want to send. So in this case, I'm going to just construct some data here. We're going to say hello, and we will encode that to be UTF-8, and we will bridge it to a CF data type. The send timeout is basically how long we're going to wait for it to be sent, and then there's a um, then there's a receive timeout, which is how long we're going to wait for the reply if, you know, after the send succeeds. The reply mode is, uh, if we actually click on the type here for CF message port send, there's a bunch of details on reply mode, but if you kind of skim down at the bottom, it says you should use the CF run loop default mode constant unless you have a specific reason to use a different mode. So we're just going to use that. So we'll say CF run loop mode default raw value and that's what we're using the last bit is for the data that's returned to us in that callback so you'll remember that in our callback we are actually sending data back so we should be returning this you made it string here in a cf data bundle and so what we want to do in our tool is we want to get access to that to do that we're going to create an unmanaged and we can kind of see what the type here is it's basically a pointer to an unmanaged CF data type. And so we're going to call this unmanaged data. The type is going to be unmanaged CF data. It's going to be an optional and we're just going to assign it to nil. And if it comes back with data, then it's not going to be nil anymore. So we can pass this in by reference like so. Let's get back the status from this. So this is going to give us back a status if it succeeds or not. The first thing we want to do is try to unwrap that unmanaged data that we got back. So we're going to try and take the retained value since we're returning a retained data blob in that, uh, that packet. If the status that we get back is equal to a KCF status, uh, what do I want? Message port success. Then we were successful with the message port itself, and so we should be able to presumably pull out valid data from this blob. So let's go and do that. We're going to try and convert this CF data into our sort of standard Swift data type. We also want to get the string out of this data type, so we're going to construct a string with data from data using the encoding of UTF-8. All right, so if that all works, we should be able to print out the string that we get back. If for some reason we couldn't, we can just say uh, couldn't uh, convert data, something like that. And then lastly, if we have a failure on the message port, we might want to print out something there as well, where uh, we could maybe just pass, uh, print out the status of whatever we actually get back so we could debug it on our own. So that should be everything. And let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to run the main application. Of course, we're going to install the tool again to get all the goodies that we just uh, created here. If we go over to terminal, we can run command me and notice that we should be sending a hello exclamation mark uh, text to our main application. So let's go ahead and run command me. We can see that the title text is updated there. So we're updating that uh, app state and that reflects in the, the Swift UI text there. And then we also get back the return result of the smiley face, you made it. So that's everything that you basically need to know about you know, sending and receiving the data from the command line tool itself. The last little nugget that I didn't really expand upon in this tutorial, but I will in the next, is the fact that this relies on the application being launched for it to actually work. So once I quit the application, and if I try to run this again, you'll see that there's no local message port with a given bundle ID, right, which is our message that we have when we fail to create one of these guys. And that's because the message port setup is done on application did finish launching, right? And there's no way to really persist this unless we have the application launched 
And so in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how we can actually launch the application before we attempt to send these messages. All right, that's all well and good. I just want to recap some of what we talked about here. So in this tutorial, we talked about CF message port. We create a local one on our GUI application. We add it to the run loop that's going to listen for these messages that are sent to us. And when one is received, we're going to call into our callback, which can just be a lazy var, which is kind of convenient and swift. It can also be just a free floating function that you can pass a particular info object to. We talked about how we could sort of unwrap that info object if we decided to do that. And we you know, unwrapped it into our app delegate, essentially assigned some app state on app delegate. We returned some data from the callback and that all gets handled uh, or returned rather to the thing that sends the message, right? So we, in our command line utility, we set up the message port, we do a send request to that particular bundle identifier that we matched in our application, and we can get back that data and unwrap it on our end to do whatever we want with it. So pretty fun stuff, uh, but again, we'll talk about how we can launch the application so that we can do this all starting from the command line tool uh, without needing to have the application launched next time. I'll see you then. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.